Uh, all right, so I was gone over the weekend. Tekken 7 had a huge tournament, right? They had Tokyo Tekken Master, uh, which is an awesome tournament. It's in the Bandai Namco office, which I think is really cool. Then obviously, just like they've done before, they did um, like an announcement stream after where they're talking about future updates and like what's coming out for the season and like all that kind of stuff. They're all like explaining stuff in Japanese and then Michael Murray's doing translation. So they talked a lot about um, the new features and new modes, right? Those are the big ones that they really hammered on because the the season pass for this season of Tekken has characters listed. And then right there, like smack in the middle, I think it is, is like new features. They showed on stream a bunch of new stuff. First, they showed some frame data. They have in-game frame data where it shows the distance between you and your opponent. It shows the frame data, the startup frames, like what it is on block or hit or anything like that. They have like a simple version, which has like the blue and red silhouettes. So when you do an attack in your plus, the character whose plus is blue. The character whose minus is red. It's similar to the Street Fighter V version of it. They have blue and red also. I think that's a cool idea because it makes it visually easy to see. I thought that was cool. And then they showed off uh, some other brand new features. And I love, love, love these new features. They showed off the punishment training, which like puts you in training mode. And you can practice against the character's most common moves. And they do it. And the game says, here's what you should punish it with. Boom, boom, like back one, two with Paul. You gotta punish with this move, all right? You block this low, you gotta punish with while standing four. This low, you gotta punish with while standing three, too. Like, it's like teaching people stuff, right? That is a really, really cool concept. And then they showed off that there's also like a hard mode and an easy mode for it uh, of the different things, like one where it changes up the moves and stuff. And I thought that was really interesting. Then there's a replay system. They said, yeah, there's gonna be this replay system now. And with this replay system, this training mode feature is kind of like built in where during the replay, there will be moments where it shows you, hey, there was a, you know, a punish opportunity there that you totally missed. You know, you missed this punish opportunity. This like uh, move that you blocked here, you could launch with, you know, Horang's back three or something. And I was like, dude, these features are really cool. A lot of people have said that Tekken needed tutorial style features for a long time. So this is really cool. The other thing they added, by the way, was the sample combos. I forgot about that. In the tr in the practice options or in the, the menu there, when you pause it and you go to your move list, they have sample co combos off of different launchers that are like easy, medium, and hard. I was like, that will go a long way, I think. That's like such a you know slam dunk for people who are trying to learn characters. Now let's get into the real discussion here. First and foremost, I'm a big fan of all the features they dropped. I think they're awesome. And I, in general, love Tekken 7. I watch all the tournaments that happen for Tekken. We follow like the status of TWT events on the stream. I'm a huge fan of Tekken. They have all these features for free. And the but is that there is a price for the frame data. It's $4 or it is included in the season pass. Now, look, I'll say this. I think Bandai and Amco are perfectly allowed to charge for frame data. And I also think that, you know, they worked really hard on these features. They're clearly very proud of them. And they clearly put a lot of work into a lot of the sample mode stuff, uh, the punishment uh, training stuff and the replay stuff. But when people get upset at you for charging for frame data because every other company gives it out for free, you can't do the shocked Pikachu face and be like, what? What do you mean you guys are upset that we're charging for frame data? You know, I wasn't going to say anything on Twitter about the whole situation at all. But the amount of community figureheads who went on Twitter and were like, you guys are too broke to pay four bucks. Just don't buy coffee in the morning. They work hard. You don't want developers to be paid money. You guys don't love developers. Oh, I can't believe you. Four dollars for a feature we've been asking for for 10 years. You guys should be grateful that they even added it in the first place there were so many people community figureheads showing up on twitter like how dare you be upset that they're charging for frame data i couldn't believe the amount of people who were saying this shit and i was like hold on i gotta say something on twitter these motherfuckers are getting crazy mocking people for not wanting to pay money for something like that is like is it just cracks me up as much as Majin obama bringing up esports ecosystem cryptocurrency Thanks very much for the two years, Reverend. I appreciate you. So I had to be like, look, guys, this is why people are upset. And I don't know why this is, but in fighting games, much like developers, consumers seem to not be able to look laterally and understand that these other games have the stuff you're talking about. I didn't say I hate Bandai Namco for charging for money. I don't think they should ever charge money for their feature. I didn't say any of that. All I said was, I don't see why you guys can't understand that when comparing Tekken 7 to other fighting games, charging for frame data seems a little strange. I was like, look, man, when you compare Tekken 7 to you other fighting games on the market currently, all of them that have frame data in them, which is a lot of them, 
have not charged for this frame data to come out. What year did Schoolgirls come out? Is it 20, it's like 2012 or something, 2011? 2013, there was Injustice and Killer Instinct. All three of those games have frame data in them. Virtual Fighter had it a million years ago. Since then, it's become common in a lot of different games to include the frame data, right? I mean, all the NRS games since then have re released with training mode, right? There's plenty of other, like Punch Planet has uh, frame data in the training mode. Like DOA has frame data in the training mode. Like lots of these games have it. And they said, now look, Tekken 7 didn't release with frame data, okay? Those games release with frame data. Adding in frame data later is impossible. No company has ever done it. In the last year and a half, Dragon Ball and Street Fighter added frame data in the training mode. Yeah, like, of, of course these games have released frame data later and they didn't charge for it. And none of the NRS games or KI or any of these other games charge for it. I think when you compare it, it makes sense for people to be like, what the fuck guys? You guys are charging for frame data? Like what the hell is going on? And I think that it's very normal for people to be upset that one company is charging them for something that every other company has released for free. And a lot of people are like, well, now hold on. Tekken 7 has hundreds of moves per character. You know how difficult it is to do that? And the thing is, is that if you know how frame data for these kinds of things, like the bots and uh, you know other games have implemented frame data, that, that doesn't really matter too much. I'm sure it adds a, a degree of difficulty, but in general, this frame data exists in the game. The game has a state where it says this character does this move, they're plus five on hit. They're writing a script to pull that data onto the from the game and put it on a UI. Like once you've done that and it works properly with one move, it's probably gonna work properly with a lot of the moves. There will be cases where like something doesn't work quite right. Maybe if you're off axis or maybe if something's wrong, it's gonna take some fixing. But for all these other games, it's very similar in how it does it, right? The number of moves doesn't, it doesn't make it monumentally more difficult. It's not like somebody's pulling up at the move and like typing in the data manually. There's a guy that replied to me that legit said, if Street Fighter V did this, I'd be pissed. But because it's Tekken, I love Bandai Namco. I'll support them. I don't care. My DeBurrito 420 says Street Fighter V sucks, though. That's why. Well, I'm glad that there's one other fucking moron in the world who doesn't understand how anti-consumerism starts up. But the two of you are peas in a pod. You should go smoke that blunt you're rolling up right now together. What a dumbass idea. St stand up for yourself. The other thing is, too, that I want to make sure that I'm clear about. If you don't mind and you're just going to pay $4 for frame data and it doesn't bother you that's perfectly fine i don't care if you're gonna buy i bought frame data i'm talking shit right now i i paid for the season pass so i didn't even know but i paid for frame data but this has been free in other games for a, over a decade right so that's why they're upset that it's now the charge feature in another game like when mark man goes on twitter and is like look i can't say too much but i've worked closely with the team and i know how hard it was for this to Im for them to implement this come on mark you think it was easy for everybody else to implement it too? Making games isn't easy, Mark. I know that. You know that. Everybody else has added these features, right? A lot of other people have added these features too, and they didn't charge for it. The other thing too is that a lot of people were saying like, you got to buy the frame data right now because if you don't buy the frame data, when Tekken 8 comes out, they won't put frame data in the game. Okay, well, let's say Tekken 8 comes out in like three years, right? That's 2022. It'll be 10 years after other games included frame data for free. So if they don't, if they haven't done it by then, they just don't care, right, to put it in the game. They just don't care that frame data is important to you. They're like, whatever. It's been, you know, other games have had it included for 10 years. Ah, fuck them. Who cares? We're Tekken. We're so, it's good ass Tekken. We don't need that. <laughs> Virtual Fighter, which included it, will have been like 20 years old. My point here is that Tekken is a tight ass game. It's a dope game, and a lot of you guys love it, and I love it. It's a fantastic game. But it's not infallible. If you know a mistake is made, you're allowed to say, "Hey, I don't think this is okay." I still love Tekken, but I, I as a consumer, don't love this that much. By saying frame data should be free, you're insinuating that it isn't worth your money. No, you're saying this is a feature that has been standard and included in many other fighting games for free, right? So charging for it in one game when it's been free in all the other games is you know, weird. And I'm not saying that you have to make it free. Some guy was like, hey, well, Sam Show made their season pass free. That means all games should make their season pass free, right? And I'm like, no. First of all, Tekken is perfectly capable. They can just charge for frame data if they want. I can't stop them. But when you compare it to the rest of the standard in other fighting games, it obviously looks like a little bit like silly, right? It's like the one game that feels that you should be paying them for them to include a training mode feature, right? Sick. That seems pretty big, as big as key work drop in the Twitch Prime. Thanks very much. It's also a bad precedent. Yeah, a lot of people brought that up. It's also a very bad precedent. What happens if they see this? You know Capcom. 
ooh, these motherfuckers will pay $4 for frame data. You know all these other companies are going to be like, what? We didn't have to include frame data for free? Every other non-American company is going to be like, oh, sick. We don't have to include frame data. Tekken doesn't do it. It's at the top of the fucking... Everybody loves Tekken. They didn't include it. Sick. We can now start charging it. Would I be okay in trading frame data for the replay fun punish system? So here's the, the... This is the part that I think is the most complicated. A lot of people said they should flip which features are free or not, right? They're saying, okay, well, frame data should be the free feature and the punishment stuff should be flipped. And it's clear, I think, right, that frame data was the less work between the two. And the reason it's not, I think, is like a lot of people have already brought it up. The hardcore want frame data. The new players want these other features. We want to make sure that the feature that goes to the most people is the feature that like the casuals want. The hardcore will pay. They're going to give us their money. But the casuals, they're going to get the free stuff, right? That's the idea. It still is a problem to me to charge for frame data of all things. And like the follow up from Michael Murray earlier was like, would you guys just not want us to update the game? <laughs> you can't let them get to you, Michael Murray. Don't let them get to you. Don't do you not have phones to just look it up. Don't let them break you. Development time does cost money. Absolutely. And all these other games that have added frame data for free have done it on development time that is funded by something else. I get why they would do it this way. It's just still so unfortunate because you don't want to charge for frame data. And nobody wants to pay for frame data. In a Tekken Discord, I was saying that it's silly to charge for basic functionality. And they said, basic functionality, you must be watching Say Jam. Yeah, imagine imagine being like, I, you want your fighting game to have features? Are you a fucking idiot? Fighting games should come with no features and you should pay for them all. It's always this discussion, isn't it? We're always like, man, we were so close to having something good, right? It's like... This game has great netcode and really cool features. Well, fuck it. That game is just trash. I don't like it. Okay, this game has awesome gameplay and it's like really cool. Well, the netcode's bad. They're charging for features that you want. There's no tutorial. There's not a lot of stuff that you want. It. Shit. All right, well, that game's not perfect either. What about this game? You know, it's like you go from game to game and none of them are a complete product that has the gameplay you want. It's always something like that as a fighting game fan, right? Not for me. KI had everything I wanted and it's fantastic. But then, shit, it's on Xbox One. It's not on PS4. And that's the biggest drawback about it, right? That's the biggest drawback. Although it's on PC now. So most people, like me, I play all my fighting games on PC. So Ocean from Blue says, shit, no one plays KI. Not true, actually. You can jump on KI and find matches immediately. Extremely fast. There's still plenty of people playing. But Eris told you not to like that game. I'm sure he did. Eris told you not to like any other game. Eris also said that netcode can never be good in fighting games. And they should just remove online play because... You guys will complain about it. It's just factually not true, by the way. Plenty of fighting games have awesome online play. And if you removed online play from fighting games, they would be fucking horrible. 99% of fighting game matches are played online in the world. I imagine 90% of the matches Aeris has played Tekken 7 with are online probably also, by the way. That's just factually wrong. There's fighting games out there with awesome netcode. All you have to do is look with your, your eyes around you. But again, like I said, fighting game... Fighting game consumers and fighting game fans and fighting game developers, for some reason, have a trouble looking laterally. Like the amount of people where where I was like, guys, charging for frame data, I can see why people find it frustrating. And they're like, no, hold on, Sage Jam. No game has added it mid-game before. And I'm like, yeah, but there's these two games that have. And they're like, yeah, but, yeah, but Street Fighter Five sucks. <laughs> I'm like, come on, bro. That's just silly. A silly is not thanking Earthbound Victor. Is, especially the replay stuff. Imagine the conversations if this was just free. The replay stuff is tight as fuck. For some reason, they are more willing to fight for that kind of stuff than they are for just, you know, accepting that the current state of fighting games could be better. That's the unfortunate truth. It's why I made a video saying fighting game fans should demand more. They should demand standard features to be standard, right, in their games. And I don't expect the feature in one game to be in a game that's coming out a year later or two years later or something, right? But we're past that. We're five, six, seven, ten years from when this stuff has been included in games. It's time to move on. It just seems like pretty obvious to me that that stuff is important. I actually have to say, of all the no good for nothing scoundrels that have come into my saloon, you're probably my favorite because you gave me the dumbest argument of all of them for me to talk about. Dude, 
What the fuck do you mean back in my day? The Prima game guides were $20 and they didn't include frame data. All right, well, guess what? Back in your day, you didn't have all kinds of shit. You didn't have mobile phones. You didn't have the fucking internet. You didn't have frame data apps that have all this available to you. What kind of boomer ass argument are you trying to bring to the table that you fucking bring up Brady games guides from 20 years ago? <laughs> Ultra Street Fighter 4 tried to charge for frame data, right? And people laugh their asses off at them charging for frame data because they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bruh, you guys are going to try to... They had an app and they had a fucking guide. And people were like, Bruh, are you serious? Are you stupid? <laughs> and people laughed at them. This, this back in my day, Brady's game guide shit. I mean, some people paid for it and some people will pay for frame data in Tekken 7. You're allowed to do it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to grab your credit card out of your hand. However, when you try to get upset at other consumers who point out... The inconsistency with the rest of the fighting game space and features that are standardized, you gotta say, well, they have a point. When people say it sets a bad precedent about charging for uh, quality of life features in fighting games, I can't disagree. It doesn't seem like it's a hard thing for me to even try to argue against, right? I'm like, no, nah, they're correct. And my assumption, by the way, is that this frame data will come out and much like the frame data for many other games that have released, it will be incorrect. It'll have spots where it's incorrect. There's there's usually some stuff that has to be patched and changed. If this $4 frame data comes out and anything's wrong, uh-oh. <laughs> At the end of the day, can we all just agree, though, that the training mode features that they've added, particularly sample combos, frame data, and the punishment guide is really cool.